Hey guys, I'm Eva, a producer and engineer from the Netherlands, and today I'll be walking you through some of my favorite ways to create movement inside a face plant. Movement is something I always look for in patches because it just creates some kind of excitement that you can't really pinpoint, but it makes all the difference to me in the end. So whether that's like a cinematic drone or just a tiny layer in a production, it just creates excitement. There's actually a ton of cool ways to create movement inside face plant, and I won't be able to cover all of them, but I'll be showing you some of my go-to ways today. All right, so we're in face plant now, and I guess the most straightforward thing to do to create movement is actually to use different layers and different envelopes. That delays when the sounds come in and gives a different tone color at a different time. So when you open up the synth, you have this generator section and a couple different options for generators, which all give you different tonalities and can add different type of textures to your sound. I'll focus on the sampler today because I've actually been loading in some fan sounds and atmos and I've been loving the results. You can do this in their samples. They have like escapes part where there's like campfire and his and rain and all you would want. It sounds something like this. You can of course high pass it or low pass it, whatever you want to do to the sound. And it can create a really interesting development inside the sound. So it just sort of moves without being super predictable. Even if it's super low in the mix, it creates interest for me. What you could also do is load in a vinyl sample from your favorite sampler and then use that as a texture for your sound, which is something like RC20 soundy. I actually used some of those techniques in a pad I made recently. I made the main layer out of this thing I found in a thrift store and just recorded it with my SM7 here. Then I pulled it into the sampler, tuned it the best I could, put up the unison. I have like a couple different envelopes for different parts of the sound. This is like the main sample. I have a wavetable supporting it and a high-end patch that comes in later. The main sound already has a lot of percussive elements and this is what that would sound like. Another option to create variation in your sounds is to actually use modulation. Kilohertz has made this super fun for modulation because you can add as many modulators as you want. You have six types of modulations. You have envelopes, you have LFOs and random modulation. You have three different MIDI input modulations, node pressure and velocity, and those react to everything you're inputting, which can be super interesting because you could change your cutoff based or your filter based on uh, the type of note you're inputting or the velocity you're inputting. Then it reacts similar like a piano would, like if you play it way louder it gets brighter than when you play it softly. So if you assign velocity to a filter you could achieve the same thing. Another thing to do that is fun is actually modulating your wavetables. You would do that by dragging up modulation amount here, deselecting, and I actually added a small delay here which is similar to, for example, envelopes that come in later or sounds that come in later. This modulation just comes in later. So the sound is already there, but then it gets modulated a bit. This is what that would sound like. You can also see the frame selector moving, so. Here it is again. That brings me to my third point, which are the snap-ins, the plugins that come with Faceplant and with the Kilohertz bundles. They have a whole ton of plugins. They are super inspiring, easy to use. There's three that stick out to me in creating rhythmic elements. You have the formant filter, which is not as much rhythmic, but more tonal variation. Take an LFO, for example. Here you can modulate the vertical side and also the horizontal side. So then you can choose your starting point based on where you drag this thing, and then also which frequency band you wanted to adjust, how broad, so with which cue. That would sound something like this. So this is a pretty extreme setting, but you can already hear that there's some cool things that can happen when you're assigning controls to that or macros to that. The transgate, which is the basis of a lot of rhythmic stuff, you can program in patterns and you have different divisions and resolutions, so it can be super interesting. You can save a couple different presets too, so you can switch those rhythmic elements throughout your track too. So that would sound something like this.
Those are just uh, a couple examples. You can also choose some of their presets. This would be the sidechained one that I tweaked a little bit to fit this. And you can also randomize them with this button here. Other than that, there's also the multipass. That's a really powerful plugin that divides your whole sound into different frequency bands. So in this case, there's also trans gates, but on certain bands. You also have effects coming in and coming out of there. So this can make a more diverse, less predictable rhythmic element because different bands are actually affected in a different way. The way that would sound would be this. They actually have a ton of really cool rhythmic presets, which can be found here. And I had a lot of fun going through those and playing sounds through those and just seeing what happens. So I'd definitely say check out the snap-ins, don't underestimate them, they're really awesome. Other than plugins and also envelopes and just your basic sound, it can be super interesting to modulate stuff in real time. It can give more of a live feeling and also more of an intuitive feeling for modulation. You can set up the macros, the face plan to your CCs on your keyboard or the other way around. Then you can actually make a preset on your keyboard, which is really chill because those eight uh, macros always stay the same. And by adding assignments, you can just switch through your presets, go to your face plan preset, and then always use that when you open up a patch. This is a patch I made for a track I'm working on, and this actually summarizes most of the things we talked about here. The sound is made up by three different groups. So you have a main group, which is a couple samplers. They come in pretty slowly because this is more of a pad sound. Then I have some wavetables to thicken the sound up, which come in later and make it a bit brighter too. Their frames are controlled by the velocity. As I input higher velocity, that essentially means that it gets a bit brighter in this case. Then I also have an Atmo group, which is just two of the samples that come with face planned. For modulation, I modulated a bunch. I already showed some stuff. The cool thing is that you can always see what you're modulating by clicking this. So this random modulation actually goes to the frame, the other wavetable. And the movement that's in there is actually being caused by Transgate, which I mapped to a macro. So the mix is being controlled by the macro. So let's hear this in context. This is uh, a pad I made for a track I'm working on currently, and I'll input some close-ups. My last point for this video would be presets and also the tutorial section. There's a bunch of really great sound designers working on these presets. You can learn so much by just diving into a couple patches, figuring out how they group stuff, which kind of sounds they use, turning off stuff and just seeing how their sound is composed. I found that I'm doing completely different things after looking at that. Another example for that is to check out the tutorials, which you can find here. Since the synth is pretty modular, it can be so hard to figure out everything you can do in it because it's almost endless so it's really great to check out some of the tutorials and actually figure out new ways to for example shape reverb stack outputs or make arps by just using modulators and it's super inspiring so i definitely advise everyone to reverse engineer some stuff check out the tutorials and then figure out your own way to create movement all right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And I'd love to hear about some of your favorite ways to work within Faceplant.